we are intrepid explorers. Walking tours with Adam and Kiara. This is a really, really nice beach. Sorry. Sorry, everyone. Sorry, everyone. I'm like a turtle. I feel like I'm getting stuck. <laughs> Buzzards do not like drones, in the slightest. In fact, they dive bomb drones. What we're planning to do today is actually go for a sail, a big sail. Number two experiment. There are demons in the trees. <laughs> so we're on the move again. This is a glorious day. <laughs> With the falcon back in the water, she was desperate to stretch her legs and start exploring again. Last week, we had an incredible nature fix in the stunning Scotland Bay. With the weekend warriors setting in and the serenity subsiding... That was good timing, the first of the party boats have just arrived. ...we decided to push further afield to the mysterious and uninhabited island of Chakachikari. Chakachikari! Chakachikari belongs to Trinidad and Tobago, located in the Bocas del Dragon, or Dragon's Mouth, between Trinidad and Venezuela. It's believed that Christopher Columbus, when anchored here in Monkey Harbour, named the island Port of Cats, mistaking the call of a howler monkey for wildcats. At various times in history, Chakachikari has served as a cotton plantation, a whaling station and a leper colony. After the abolition of slavery in Trinidad, the country experienced a surge in leprosy cases when East Indian immigrants were recruited to Trinidad to address their new labour shortages. In response, the colonial government invited the Dominican Sisters of St. Catherine of Siena from France to establish leper colonies for treatment and care. By 1922, the disease has spread so widely that complete isolation from the mainland was deemed necessary, and Chakajikari was established as the location for the colony. The male and female residents of the colony were strictly separated and prohibited from having visitors or leaving the island. Despite the challenging circumstances, only two sisters contracted the disease throughout the colony's service. Ultimately, ten sisters were buried on the island, having dedicated their lives to the service of the sick. Eventually, medical advancements for leprosy treatment and fewer Dominican sisters led to the abandonment of the island after 1984, when the last patient on the island had passed. These days, it is completely uninhabited, with only a lighthouse still in service. All right, we've arrived here in Chakachikari. And we are going to go for a bit of a lighthouse walk. It's, uh, we've looked at it on a map and we think that maybe <laughs> we've sketched the right way, but there's not like a, oh, point here for, like, go here to go on this walk. At least not that we can see. So we've kind of looked at a map and kind of gone, this could be the way. Anyway, it's early in the morning and we're going to head up there and uh, see what we can see from this big lighthouse. Can't drive away from the boat without turning around, you know you're you're in love. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> so this is the little bay that we came to with some friends, and Adam seems to think that Adam is convinced that there is a path from here. I personally can't see one, but that's okay. We are intrepid explorers, so we'll carry on. Just want to wait. Wait here. Yeah. I'll just quickly stick my head up. Okay. So I hope that this trail intersects with the larger trail that goes over there. Fingers crossed. Walking tours with Adam yeah. and Kiara. Voila! Stage one. Gee, they said it was a paved road all the way up, but I didn't know it was going to be quite like this. Throw your skateboard. Spotted some cotton trees. This is how cotton wool buds are made. We've almost made it. We can see it in the distance. It, uh, even though it's like eight o'clock in the morning, it's about thirty degrees already. So we've kind of been suffering a little going up this hill, even though it's paved. But um, it's uh, it's been a little bit too hot to to form with. It. We've been a little bit too exhausted to form a sentence. It's like every couple of steps, we're just like, 
possibly we're also mildly unfit as well. Yeah. But anyway. <laughs> Boat life is not good for your cardio. <laughs> you really need to make yeah. the extra effort to get off the boat and go and put some steps in. <laughs> yep. Especially in the heat. They really are ugly birds. It's like a, it's like a turkey. Like, when you see them up high, they have like the same profile as a, like a hawk or something, but they've just got this horrible turkey head. It's a buzzard. I'm pretty sure. You just want me to go first, don't you? To scare them all away. So that they'll attack me first. I mean, that would be hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> as long as I don't start circling overhead, <laughs> then it might be okay. Oh, there's so many of them. On me. Oh no! <laughs> wow! Sorry! Sorry! Sorry everyone! Sorry everyone! I mean, you can wow. stay there, it's okay. This is creepy. Yeah. Really, really creepy. Wow, how steep these steps. I don't want to come back down there. <laughs> Now we're up near the vultures. Who's looking down on who now? <laughs> Master the art of doing everything one handed. Essential walking skill. Big glass box. Yep. <laughs> I don't know if myself and my backpack will fit. Ooh, I feel like a turtle. I feel like I'm a bit stuck. <laughs> First thing, no gate. <laughs> so so that's Venezuela. So close. As soon as I've up top of a lighthouse, I'm like, is very far down. A bit nervous. <laughs> but 55 foot mast, absolutely fine. Wow, you can hear them go screaming by like whoosh. Imagine what they're gonna do when we fly the drone. <laughs> Might be its last flight. Okay, well, um, lesson learnt. Buzzards do not like drones in the slightest. In fact, they dive bomb drones, especially little drones like what we have. That was the closest we've ever come to losing the drone to a very large bird ever. I think like, I think about five of them, and I'm so annoyed too, um, not, not Adam's fault, but like about three, four of them dive bombed it first of all. And then we were like, okay, get the drone back in, get the drone back in. And Adam's like, Oh, I didn't record I any of that. Record yet. <laughs> I was so caught up with like, are they going to do it? Getting back to the to us to get it out of the air quickly. That I yeah. forgot to push record anyway. So, they so really obviously again. we had to do it again. <laughs> <laughs> and they were somewhat better behaved the second time. Better, only like one one dive bomb. Okay, I think it's I think it's time to give these birds back their territory. Back their, yeah, their peace and quiet. <laughs> yeah. You've been a you've been a sport. Thanks, guys. We appreciate it. All right, we're gonna head back down again, and uh, there's a I can actually see it from here. There's um, the actual leper colony is down there, and so we definitely want to check that out before we um, leave Chaka Chaka. This is a really, really nice beach. We, uh, I think it wasn't, uh, the sun wasn't out properly when we first got here and it was just, um, I don't know, I think I, I don't know, it's just a glorious beach. <laughs> it's like really shallow for ages, comes in a really uh, 
shallow angle. It's just lovely, like Adam's pretty much halfway out of the bay and is still only up to his thighs. It's lovely. So we've just arrived at the landing dock on the largest of the, the group of nestled buildings all around the island. This one is apparently a hospital and there's three massive buildings here on top of this hill. So we've got a little track, a little goat path to go up to the top and we'll just go and rummage through and see what we find. Highly trust these floorboards. This is where all the buzzards are going to be. Yeah. Made any friends with the buzzards yet? I always walk into these old buildings and I try and imagine what it used to look like. And I remember Adam and I were in Machu Picchu and uh, we, I was trying to do the same thing and it's so hard in a place like that to be like, so this must have been there and that's, you know, it's, I find that fun. <laughs> so this has been abandoned for like some, something like 39, 40 something years. And um, I just love places like this when the jungle takes them back, like how tenacious the jungle is. Like there's buildings, this is one of the more open ones, but some of the other sites around, around the island, they've just completely been taken back and I just love to see that. I love to see like if we don't carve out our patch the jungle will reclaim it. It's sort of nice to know that like life goes on even after long after we're gone and it will find a way. It'll take back what's what it it's owed. <laughs> Every now and again you'll uh, startle a buzzard and you'll just hear like <laughs> and this rustling and all this chaos happens above you and it's a ginormous buzzard growling and taking off because we've disturbed it. <laughs> Tip for new players, if you're ever out exploring yourself and you're rummaging around wreckages with questionable floors, the tip my dad once told me, always try to step on the joins or anything with nails or screws because whatever's got screw in it, it's got something underneath it and thus half the chance that you're gonna fall through the floor. Sage advice. I mean, other than the fact that you prefaced it is, if you're ever exploring yourself. Did I say exploring yourself? If you're ever exploring yourself. <laughs> I was seeing where you're gonna go with that. I don't, have any, I don't have any particular tips on that. Oh wow, look at that coat of arms on the wall. I already found it. Moving right on. <laughs> Places like these around the world, no matter where you find them, are often more reminiscent of the morning after a party than a site of historical importance. This was no exception. It's easy to laugh at the comical graffiti on the walls and get caught up in the spectacle of crawling around in a ruin. But as the day went on, I couldn't help but think of the hundreds of people who lived and died here, and the selflessness of those who chose to care for them. So that was the Chekachikari uh, leper colony. Well, leper colony? I think colony? it was, yeah, it was Hospital. a colony which had the, uh, It's been lepers. long since abandoned and it's still in pretty good shape really. You can see that mm. the, the locals Some come here out. and use it as sort of a, a party shack. The, and, but to be fair, there's so many buildings scattered around the island yeah. that you could, you could explore for a week and, and only just find all of mm. them probably. It would take you a full week to scurry through all of them. Yeah, you're searching the trees and you're like, oh, there's another, another building one. there. Yeah. And another stairwell off to nowhere. It's just so bizarre to think that this, like, only 35, 40 years ago was, like, had people living on this island and now all the houses are just empty, nothing's here, everything's been abandoned. It's, it feels like such a shame, you know, that it had, they had such an infrastructure um, and it's, they've all just gone. It's, 
it's I'm weird, it's sort bizarre. Of glad it didn't become like a five star resort though. That's very um, true. <laughs> yeah, it could just as have easily gone the other way and there'd be condominiums <laughs> yeah. lining the walls and fancy pants bars and restaurants and things. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure one day, one day yeah. progress will catch up with us all. But it's a nice piece of history right now. For now, yeah, it's an awesome piece of history and a great place to hide away from the hustle and bustle of Trinidad. Yeah. After a massive day of exploring the island, it was time for us to start planning our departure, which meant heading back to the land of the living to restock, refill, check out and put to sea. Ah, lovely, lovely day. It's very, very calm this morning but the wind always picks up kind of around 10 o'clock-ish. So what we're planning to do today is actually go for a sail, a big sail. We're gonna go all the way up to Antigua. It's about uh, 400, 350 to 400 miles. And we're thinking, I think it's gonna take about three and a half days. Adam is very optimistic and he's like, we'll be doing six knots, it's gonna be like two and a half days. We'll see who's right. Um, but pretty much this morning, uh, we're going to go and check out. We're going to go and just do a few last minute things, haul a dinghy as well and all that stuff. And then, uh, yeah, get ready for a big old sail. I wish all anchorages were as flat as it is right now. And as soon as you want to go sailing and you just turn around the corner and it's like a brilliant 18 knots. <laughs> That'd be wonderful. Coffee. First coffees in the morning too. We're obviously up very early if we are. We're having coffee on the run. And that's it. We are officially checked out of Trinidad. It was a uh, process was like very very easy. Um, they still use carbon paper, so. That's a bit ancient, like there's no digital system, but in saying that, there was only five forms. So it's not that bad. Like. It gets a bit of a bad rap. Like there's a few comments yeah. on like Navionics forums. and forums and things about it being an excessive process. But honestly, it's really no worse than anywhere else. Like yeah. as long as you're efficient and organized and polite, they'll be the same. Yeah. The worst part is just carbon paper. And if you do the carbon paper right, you only have to fill out the form once and you exactly. get three copies, which is, <laughs> weird but anyway it it's uh it, it gets a bum rap i don't think it's as bad as everyone says it is as has been the case for most things in trinidad like has just gets kind of just has this mystique around it that kind of scares people off or yeah. like the passage down here it's just 80 miles south of grenada it's just another transit between lesser antilles mm -hmm. islands the process of checking in yeah a little bit involved but that's partly because of covid and partly because they just have a very useful and active coast guard system here but again if you play ball and you're organized and you put your, you know, cross your T's and dot your I's, everything is fine. Easy. And yeah. the checkout process is much the same and it is well yeah. worth the trip. I think so. Um, so I would come here again in yeah. a heartbeat. I'm happy to be leaving, but sorry to be going. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, exactly. Yeah, like, I'm ready I'm, to get going. Yeah, but I'm, I'm ready to start a new adventure, but I'm sad to be leaving here because it's been a, a really, really lovely experience here. Absolutely. It really has been. Yep. And that's almost unheard of considering we actually had haul out time here, boat job time. Yeah, it's rare to, still to want say to go it's a great back, place. <laughs> want to go back to a place when you were in the yard. Usually you're like, I don't want to see that place ever again. Join us next week as we set off on the 380 nautical mile journey north to Antigua, non-stop. Adam is very optimistic and he's like, we'll be we doing six knots, it's going to be like two and a half days. We'll see who's right. And find out once and for all who is right. Three days or two and a half? Let us know in the comment section below what you think.